Painter Irma Stern's very important portrait, Praying Arab, is set to go under the hammer at Strauss & Co. In fact, the painting is expected to fetch between, wait for it, 16 to 18 million rand. Stern is best known for her portraits and still lives, with work in both genres commanding excellent prices. And in fact, for more on the story, we're joined by senior art specialist from Strauss & Co., Vellum van Rensburg. A very good morning, Vellum. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. The, just the s estimate of 16 to 18 million rand. Let's start there. How did we get to that figure? You know, this is not the first time that uh, we see Irma Stern carrying such uh, wonderful auction estimates. You'll remember that uh, a couple of years ago, in 2013, we sold a double Arab portrait mm -hmm. for over 21, it was 21.1 uh, million rand. And then quite recently, the beginning of the year, we saw another one, children reading the Koran, uh, for even more than that, 22.3 million. Uh, this, these works are exceptionally rare. The, Arabs she painted while she visited the Zanzibar, the island uh, off the eastern coast of Africa. She visited there in 1939 and again in 1945. That is when this particular portrait was painted. And she really uh, took up a, a studio right across the road from uh, the palace, the Sultan's palace. She befriended the Sultan's wife, uh, the Sultana. She had tea with them uh, and everything. And she really looked at the human aspect of the figure. Some people say, oh, you just uh, portray stereotypes, but not Irma. You know, she befriended them, uh, she paid her models, uh, and uh, she gives us a wonderful sense of what was happening straight after the First World War uh, in Africa. <clears throat> you know, uh, you are right. She actually transports you when you are looking at those paintings. It's like you can feel the emotion. Yes. She transports you with her on her trip. Talk to me, Valalem, about the technique that she uses. Now, um, you have to remember that she actually studied under the German Expressionists in the early part of the 20th century. She befriended them, she corresponded with them, and she brought abstract uh, German Expressionism back to South Africa again. But here's the interesting thing. Um, then she realized, uh, with the outbreak of uh, the Second World War, she realized that she couldn't go back to Europe. And then she started traveling through Africa. She visited Elizabethville, uh, Libreville in the Belgian Congo. She visited Dakar in Senegal, and of course, Stonetown in uh, uh, Zanzibar. And the interesting thing is when people ask her, why do you do that? She said, you know, people think Africa has all the savages, but it's actually the Europeans that are the savages. And that's why we get this very uh, insightful uh, portrayal of the people of Africa, her new models that she painted. Now, the technique that you're asking about, is typical, you know, very thick brush stroke, very bright colors, and that's very typical of the expressionist. So she's actually giving back to the European trends of uh, German expressionism. <clears throat> Let's talk about her global uh, travels, um, Wilhelm. I mean, she has art collectors both nationally and internationally that follow her work very closely. Um, I'll almost go at I, 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 I almost go as far as calling them fans yeah. just around the world. Um, talk to me about some of the interactions from the international clients and both locally. What have you seen? So at the moment, what we see is that there's a renewed interest in what is known as uh, early black modernist artists. And she was part of uh, uh, that movement. And all of a sudden, in big museums, Museum of Modern Art, uh, the Pompidou Centre in Paris, and so on, all mount these exhibitions of uh, African modernism. So all of a sudden, this is her moment. Uh, and especially in the Middle East, where, of course, uh, the Arab uh, subject matter resonates quite uh, loudly. We get uh, a lot of interest from there. Uh, she's always had a very strong um, uh, bias public in the UK, uh, increasingly so in the US at the moment. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this work lands up in the Middle East in a museum. Mm. Now, Valalem, you're talking millions here. You're talking millions and millions, and I saw on your website it's hundreds of millions. Uh, let's have a look at the economic well-being of the art industry in South Africa at the moment. As Strauss & Co, I see you've paid out hundreds of millions to artists over the last few years. 
Um, the art market, I have to say, is, is quite buoyant. Uh, I think uh, I ascribe it to, you know, during the lockdown, it's a period we all want to forget. But I think people, because they were at home, reassessed their collections. Uh, and they started uh, to change, uh, to shift focus, uh, to sell off, to buy new stuff. Uh, and I think that is a direct result of that. So there's a constant influx of work. You know, we have 10 online auctions, uh, auctions a year, for instance. We have four or five main live auctions, as we call them, uh, and they fill up quite quickly. Uh, but there's also a great demand, you know, so they come in and they go out uh, quite rapidly. Uh, and we've had up to now a uh, very good year. Now, um, why do people sell their art? You know, there are different things. We call it the five Ds, you know, the death in the family. We have downsizing. People move to the Cape. Uh, we have uh, divorce, for instance. We have dealers giving them their stock uh, and, uh, and the like. So there are many reasons why people uh, sell their art, but there's also a very receptive buying um, uh, audience. And you ask about the international situation. Increasingly, our buyers are from overseas. Mm -hmm. So it's not surprised to see a Pirmiev in Los Angeles or an Irma's turn in Beijing. You know, that is what we see. And uh, the modern day analytics, they give us all those statistics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and before we wrap up our time with you this morning, Valhalla, let's talk about the date that this goes under the hammer. I'm seeing here that it's, it's on the 19th of September. On the day, what are we expecting? Yeah, so the viewing is actually open. The viewing is in Cape Town. You know, you mentioned the Joburg Art Fair, but when you're in Cape Town, please go to Brickfields. Uh, it's on the corner of Main Road and Brickfields in uh, Woodstock. Uh, it's open for viewing from 10 to 5 every day, um, uh, starting today. Um, and on the day, I think we expect a huge crowd in the, crowd in the sale room. Uh, but of course, uh, internationally, we get up to between 700 and 1,200 viewers tuning in online. Uh, it is, of course, live streamed. Uh, and so there's great interest in this particular work. <clears throat> great. That was Valhelm van Rensburg. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, specialist from Strauss & Co. talking about the very beautiful Irma Stern.